Artificial intelligence just flew an F-16 fighter jet in the real world. The US military has been piloting an F-16 that can fly in simulators and has now made it work in a real F-16 fighting Falcon. The jet flew 12 flights under AI control, totaling 17 hours of flight time. DARPA started the Air Combat Evolution System in 2019. The goal was to create an autonomous, human-level artificial intelligence for air combat, and then move up with the Human Artificial Intelligence Collaboration for dogfighting. The mission of DARPA is to make pivotal investments in breakthrough technologies for national security. By August of 2020, eight companies developed artificial intelligence capable of air combat. Autonomous software built by Heron Systems dominated the field, defeating each of the other eight and eventually even defeating an experienced F-16 fighter pilot in a simulator. In December of 2022, some of the DARPA partners actually implemented this software into an F-16 fighter jet. Now this took some tweaking because it was originally a plane that was meant for a human, so they had to replace many of the components in the cockpit. This F-16 is called the X-62A, or the VISTA, which stands for Variable In-Flight Simulator Test Aircraft. And although it hasn't been tested in an actual dogfight yet, that is coming, this test run proves that artificial intelligence can actually control a full-scale F-16. And speaking of AI moving into the real world, Elon Musk has announced that the new Tesla robot, Optimus, can actually stand up and walk. With bearing in mind that uh, when we did AI Day, uh, this version of Optimus didn't work, walk at all. So the rate of improvement here I think is, is quite uh, significant. Um, it's obviously not doing parkour, uh, but uh, it is walking around. So what we saw on AI Day was something that wasn't nearly as robust and agile as what we've seen come out of Boston Dynamics, but it was a robot that moved, I would call it walking-ish, but now it looks like it can really move around. The dexterity in the fingers, I think, is really impressive. They definitely have made huge improvements in just, what was that, six months ago at most? Optimus can now walk, pick up items, carry them as it moves, and perform basic tasks. Now, to be fair, some of the most impressive stuff that this robot did was actually shown on a video, which I'm sure was done, but that's a bit of a cherry-picked instance. But I gotta admit, watching the way that the fingers wrap around this other robot that this robot is building, which in itself is an interesting thing to think about. You start getting into interesting questions of like, what's the ratio of humans to humanoid robots? So everybody's talking about this comment that Elon made during the presentation where he said that he believes these robots will outnumber humans. I think it might be greater than one to one, you know, because you could, you could sort of see a use, a home use for robots, industrial uses for robots. I think, I think we might exceed a one to one ratio of humanoid robots to humans. That means we can expect a market size of 7 billion at least. My guess is that if you also include drones and all the other types of robots, we're probably gonna be outnumbered like a thousand to one. So get ready for a world with billions and billions of autonomous robots. It's not even clear what an economy means at that point, since an economy is output per person times persons. But if output is much higher and there's no limit on persons, then what's the actual limit on the economy? And finally, there's this new technology that's actually soft. It's a robot, but think of it as something that's sort of squishy and malleable, and it has information in the way that it's being compressed and twisted. And this new highly accurate real-time sensing ability is enabling breakthroughs in soft robotics. A new ultra-thin electronic skin has been laminated onto a human hand. The new ultra-thin electronic skin contains polymer light-emitting diodes, which exhibit bright electroluminescence, even when crumpled. Some of the applications that they're imagining this could be used for would be surgical tools, prosthetics, and devices for hazardous environments. So this is cool because it allows robots to have something closer to what we would call proprioception. That means we kind of have a sense for where our bodies are in the world, a sense of physical self-awareness. This technology called eSkin is just one millimeter thick, and it can be combined with AI software to give soft robots the ability to sense things only millimeters away in all directions and very quickly. You might not think about building this kind of thing into a traditional robot. Why do we really have a sense of touch and skin? To protect us, right? And how do we protect ourselves? It was hot. There's a sense of pain. 
but it's important for them to understand how their skin is in the environment so that they can make a guess as to their own speed, shape, weight, and how those qualities will interact with the environment. And speaking of that explosion of autonomous robots that we're gonna see in our future, Ford Motor Company is exploring ways to pair drones with their vehicles. So according to some new patents that were filed, Ford is exploring ways that a drone could basically live, I guess, in the trunk or the front of your car if it's electric, and it can provide safety, comfort, and convenience features to the vehicle's occupants. There's a lot going on there, but I could imagine, I guess, like things like drive-throughs or bringing groceries up or hovering above you to see how traffic is. One concept involves a drone that could be deployed from the back of a Ford F-150 during an accident. While another includes sending the drone up to actually learn about the weather, collect information about the road and the environment, and send that back down to the vehicle. And the final one was about using drones to do that little bit of delivery, either following you with your groceries up to your door, or just getting something from someone quickly and easily without having to pull right up. And how many times have you been like at a drive-thru and you're just like creeping up on that thing? Having a bunch of drones just fly over and pick up the package and drop it in your car, that could definitely change the way that we do a lot of our shopping, fast food, stuff like that. Now, if you're as interested in this kind of stuff as I am, click the link below and you can sign up for my newsletter where I'm gonna be delivering the best in technology right to your inbox. And if you are getting recommended a video right now, which Google's algorithm thinks you might like, I encourage you to click on it and watch more.